It's been a little while, I suppose 10 days or so, since the last time you guys saw any sort of progress on this E.C. Atkins handsaw restoration. And I apologize for that. It's kind of an uncool thing to do, to be making videos of a process and then just quit for a little while. I've had some things come my way life-wise that have been a bit distracting, but that's no excuse. So, without further ado, let's get cracking, see if we can't make some progress on this thing. The first thing I'd like to get going here is to glue this crack. And I have what I feel like is a pretty brilliant way of getting that accomplished. I'm going to put this piece of wood in here, one of these directions, maybe like this. That'll work. So I'm going to do this and just gently, slowly, steadily move it up. That opens up that crack, but doesn't uh, doesn't do it in any sort of rapid fashion, so it doesn't crack the rest of it. And I do have to be pretty careful because I do have a bit of a another crack right here. So now I got that opened up. Let me stuff some glue in it. What do you think of my glue cap? That's what happens when you break off the end of your glue by biting it. Don't judge me. If you've used wood glue, you know what I'm talking about. Let's see how much I can get in there. Hmm. Got too much of my little stick here. That glue is starting to get a little tacky. Might be about time to replace my bottle of glue. So as I'm gluing this, I'm thinking about the fact that the other old saw that I have, it had obvious cracks in it, or it had cracks repaired. I don't know if they used any glue, but I do know that they used, in a couple of places, if not three, screws. Everything was like kind of some old funky screws shoved in there. And I don't know whether that's a product of... Whenever it was done, the wood glue that was available wasn't up to the task. I'll get that back in frame so you can watch it. Or um, or maybe they just didn't have any wood glue, or I don't know. I don't know what the deal was. Maybe uh, maybe wood glue is insufficient for this task, and I'll find that out later. We'll see. I'm going to go ahead and go with it. Elmer's has not let me down just yet. And I know it's probably bothering somebody that I'm getting wood glue all over this doggone thing. I say that because it's bothering me somewhat. But, not to fear. Not to worry. I have a plan. So the next move is to go ahead and get glue all over my hand. Get that stick out of there. And then I'll take my wet rag, just wet with water. I'll find the corner that's wet. There we go. I'll take my wet rag and just wipe this glue off. Because much like the Elmer's glue that you ate when you were in first grade, you remember, I used to lick it and it would dissolve a little bit. Well, Elmer's wood glue does the same thing. I mean, I don't know if it works when you lick it, but when you have a water uh, a rag with some water on it, you can just wipe this stuff right off of the areas where you don't want glue. Got the excess wiped off, and I'm going to clamp it up. And after I get it clamped up, I'll give it another wipe down, just because when I clamp it. When I clamp it, I expect it to goosh out. There we go. And squish out a bunch more glue. I'm glad to see it squishing out glue. That means that I did get glue all the way in the whole crack. It's pretty important to do this, this extra wipe down when you're gluing stuff because once this glue sets, it's, uh, well, 
it's kind of a bugger to get off it's kind of made that way it's supposed to stick it's not supposed to just come off so this is kind of a case where an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of the cure if you get this glue out of there before it dries it's easy you can just kind of wipe it out but if you let it dry in there you've got your work cut out for you I confess I'm a wee little bit worried about that glop of glue that you can see here in the slot let me try that again that you can see here in the slot there you go I don't really have the means well, maybe I do Maybe I can get it out with that, you think? Oh, yeah. Nothing to it. All right. I think that'll be sufficient. Carefully put this guy down here. And let it dry. So you may or may not remember the comment that I made while I was pulling these guys out of that saw handle about keeping track of them because it's important to me that they all go back into the correct spot which is a true statement however I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing when I went to put them away and I just grabbed them so consequently they're all jumbled up I suppose it's probably not going to be a real big deal I might as well go ahead and get them cleaned up here that paint that's on there is some pretty tough stuff. Looks like I'm going to have to use some chemicals. dried up. Look at that. Can't even really see where the crack was. That's pretty amazing. I think it was right there. Yeah, there we go. Right there and right there. So now we got that fixed. It's time to uh, see what we can do about rectifying this. I'm a little a little uncertain how I want to do it, whether I want to bring that curve all the way up to that point, kind of do that, or whether I want to just round off the whole thing right there and call it good. So I'm going to chuck it up in the vise and uh, see how it looks. So this seems to be an issue oftentimes when you're trying to restore old tools. How... how um, how much do you restore, as in bring it back to perfect original condition, and how much do you fudge uh, to make it useful? So in this case, I'm quite obviously going to fudge a little bit, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just level off this jagged piece and start there, and then hopefully hopefully I can kind of blend that back side back in, and it'll be good to go. Now I gotta bring it down further. Talk on it. I think I may cut that with a coping saw. Hmm. 
And now we smooth it out. See if I can blend that in. Yikes. I think maybe I'll go a little unorthodox here. See if I can just carve this. All right, it's a little short. The horn is now a little short, but I'm gonna say that's pretty acceptable. What do you think? And now the part that's quickly becoming my very favorite thing about restoring old tools, the boiled linseed oil. And we've got all the crap off of this handle. I'm gonna seal it properly. It's pretty amazing, the transformation. Take a good look. I don't know about you, but as far as I'm concerned, you just cannot compete with that look. An oiled wood handle. I just love that. Brings out the grain in it, leaves the wood natural, Look at that, you can hardly even tell where that top horn was modified. So there you go. I'll probably do this another time or a couple of times today. This is very, very dry, so it's going to soak that linseed oil in like crazy. It's going to be very thirsty. And now the other best part. Well, that's all for now. The only thing left to do to this beauty is to sharpen it. I've got big ideas of recutting the teeth in it to make it a fleam tooth rather than a straight rip saw pattern. So I'm gonna do a little bit of research into that and um, determine whether I'm capable of it or not. And on the next video about this saw, you'll see the result. I appreciate you watching. Click the thumbs up if you liked the video. Please do click the thumbs down if you didn't like the video, but do us both a favor and tell me why in the comments that you didn't like the video if you don't. And um, subscribe if you haven't already. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.